July 2nd, 1943. American B-25 bombers approached their target along the coast of Sicily, preparing for the impending Allied invasion. As they opened their bomb bays, two enemy FW-190s, elite German fighters, move in to attack the American bombers' easy targets and in their sights. Suddenly, a U.S. Army Air Force's P-40 speeds into position between the bombers and the German fighters. Maneuvering inside of the enemy fighters, the pilot unleashes a long burst of fire, watching Tracer smash into his target. The German fighter lurches to the left, then drops from the sky, crashing into the ground below as his wingman flees for safety. Neither the German fighters nor the American bombers realize that history has just been made as the pilot of the P-40 was Lieutenant Charles B. Hall of the 99th Pursuit Squadron, today better known as the Tuskegee Airmen, and the first African-American pilots in U.S. military history. This marked the first of more than 100 confirmed kills. Their story had begun just two years earlier, July 1941 when 13 recruits reported for training in Tuskegee, Alabama. As the gathering storm of the late 1930s erupted into all-out war in Europe, Americans of all backgrounds braced for the moment the war would come to them, with many eager to serve. Yet prejudice still held sway in official policy, and no black man had ever been allowed to serve as a pilot in the U.S. military. We were Americans who happened to be black once given an opportunity, performed in a way that disproved the generalizations and racist thoughts that because of the color of skin, we had no capability and could not work well with the white person. So we were really denied participation in aviation at the time. After much lobbying and the need for talented pilots in the event of war, Promising African-American recruits were selected for the newly formed 99th in what many called the Tuskegee Experience. Training would prove intense and follow the exact framework as that of the white recruits. The men welcomed the rigor. They knew that in order to be accepted, they'd have to be every bit as good as the white pilots, and then some. At the time, we were just Americans glad to be able to take part in what was taking place. The 99th was ordered to North Africa, flying missions in the invasions of Sicily and Italy. They joined three new squadrons, forming the 332nd Fighter Group, soon transferred to Italy, flying missions over mainland Europe. There they were joined by a young second lieutenant, fresh out of flight school, Charles McGee, was born in Cleveland, the son of a minister. Joining the University of Illinois ROTC program in 1939, he leapt at the opportunity to train as a pilot. Having come out of 10 years of depression, we were just as eager to take the jobs in the military buildup. By the time Lieutenant McGee began flying combat missions in February 1944, the Tuskegee Airmen were earning a reputation as excellent combat pilots. On August 23rd, as Lieutenant McGee piloted his P-51C, nicknamed Kitten, on a bombing mission over Czechoslovakia, a German FW-190 streaked through the American bomber formation. Over the radio, McGee was given the order, go get him. On cue, Lieutenant McGee broke from the formation and fell in behind the fighter. The enemy pilot was skilled, taking evasion action and diving for the ground before racing over a German airfield. All the while, McGee was locked on his target. The enemy fighter in his sights, McGee fired a burst, raking the plane with bullets before it crashed into the ground, his first confirmed victory. He continued low to the ground to avoid anti-aircraft fire, then rejoined his comrades in the sky. It was a circumstance at the time, although there was segregation, America still came behind the effort that we would defeat Hitler and then later uh, the Japanese. 
Charles McGee had flown a total of 136 combat missions by the time he was transferred home to serve as an instructor on November 23, 1944. He would remain in the Air Force for 30 years, flying combat missions in Korea and Vietnam, and retiring a colonel. His three-war total of 409 combat missions is the Air Force record that still survives today. A legend among a legendary group of men, Charles McGee would survive to be one of the last remaining great pilots of the Tuskegee Airmen.